Welcome to the show. We have a great show today. It's been a while since I did a basic build video. Uh, this is kind of going to be a blend of um, maybe some real basic sort of minimalist type of, uh, of forging and then also a little bit more advanced work using some power tools, using a welder and, and so on. Uh, but you can actually build something very similar to what this finished product is going to be. Uh, you can actually build that with very minimal tools and very, uh, very little experience. In fact, one of the first builds I ever did is pretty similar to this one. So I will leave a link to that video uh, at a certain point in here. You'll see um, where I kind of deviate from that design and, uh, and I'll leave a link to that uh, so that you can go and check that one out if you want to. Uh, but with that, I think we'll just jump right into it. So the idea here is... Uh, I'm going to start with a piece of scrap that pretty much anybody has access to. This is a piece of 5 eighths rebar. You could use something a little narrower or a little wider. Uh, for me, I'm starting out with 5 eighths because it's what I have. And uh, I know that I can concentrate the steel into one end uh, to give me enough to work with to make a uh, pretty decent size uh, tomahawk or hatchet blade. So the first thing I'm going to do here after selecting a good piece of steel is get to work upsetting the metal. And uh, as I kind of mentioned, upsetting just means to concentrate the steel. Well, you'll see what I mean here. So I'm heating up one end and I don't want the heat to work too far back. I really want to concentrate it out at that first couple of inches. That's going to become the blade or if you prefer the bit of the hatchet. And so I want a little extra steel to work with there. Now, for anybody who hasn't done this before, um, this can actually be a pretty time-consuming process. Uh, it's not hard to do, it just requires a little bit of patience. It takes some time to really upset the metal and get some decent expansion. Now, you can really use any hard surface for this. My anvil surface is actually a little bit soft because it's a cheap anvil. Uh, so I'm gonna do some of this on the floor. This is a good solid concrete floor. You do probably wanna be a little bit careful if you're using concrete for uh, for upsetting because you can damage the floor. Uh, for this particular project, I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of it, uh, so I'm going to at least demonstrate that it can be done on a concrete floor. Once I have that pretty much how I want it, uh, I'll throw calipers on it here just so you can see. Uh, there's a pretty substantial increase over the thickness uh, or width of the metal uh, over that 5 8 original piece of rebar. With a little bit of imagination, you can see that if you flatten this out, uh, it's almost already in the shape of like an axe blade. I should mention it has been a really long time since I used my outdoor uh, backyard forge. There's been kind of a drought going on and we're under all kinds of crazy fire restrictions so I just haven't been able to use that one. I want to do a lot more projects with that because I really want to show people how accessible this hobby really is. Uh, you don't have to have a lot of expensive equipment. You don't have to have a lot of skill or take a lot of time when you're first getting into it. Of course, if you want to become a skilled blacksmith, that's a completely different matter. Uh, I am nowhere near that level. Uh, and there are people who spend years and years training, uh, taking classes and learning from masters and developing that craft. But if you just want to get into, uh, you know, into the hobby at a basic level, it's, it's actually pretty straightforward work. So like I said, uh, I'll be working in the indoor forge, but when things settle down and we maybe move into the wet season later in the summer, uh, I do hope to be able to get back out and do some more forging in that backyard forge. Now, this process of flattening out the end and forming the blade, this is, I think, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there are different ways, different techniques that you could use. I'm really not an expert on this, uh, but I just kind of keep working it, keep hammering it. Uh, I try not to put too much force into each swing, especially when the metal is red hot, because I've found that it is pretty easy to overdo it and cause a little damage where you don't want to. Of course, you can heat it up again and correct it. I would just as soon get the project done without using a lot of extra swings and a lot of extra fuel to correct any mistakes I've made. So again, I tend to favor slow, even swings and really letting that three pound hammer do most of the work. The only really tricky part of this, uh, and this will be entirely up to you depending on what shape you're going for, but for me, I wanted almost a bearded ax appearance to the finished blade. Again, this is gonna be a very small blade, but I just happen to like that style where there's a little bit of a downward curvature of the bit of the ax. This is not particularly hard to do. It mainly just involves holding the workpiece at an angle that allows you to, uh, to strike the bottom of the blade and in the process give you a, you know, a more or less flat across the top look of the ax or the hatchet. So once I have most of the hammer work done, uh, really I'm just trying to get down to uh, maybe an eighth of an inch or so at the edge. I'm gonna do the rest of the work with a grinder. So once I'm satisfied with the overall shape, 
and the overall taper of the blade. Uh, I'm just going to let it cool. Uh, to do that, I'll actually put it in the forge to make sure that it cools slowly. And that'll also help to, I don't want to say normalize, because I'm not really going through the proper process for normalization. Uh, but this should help to relax some of the stresses in the metal and hopefully give us a little bit more even internal structure to the steel. So once that's done, I'm just going to look it over a little bit. Again, make sure I'm satisfied with the overall shape. And then this is the point at which I will refer you to an earlier video I've done. If you want to do more of a purist, you know, forging only type of project, you can actually put a pretty simple curve into this piece of rebar and, uh, and then just do a wrap on the handle. So I'll link to that video up here so you can go and check it out if you're interested. I think it's my first video that had to do with forging. So the level of quality may be a little bit lacking. In particular, some of the camera equipment and audio uh, really wasn't that great. But I think it's a pretty good instructional video uh, and it'll give you a sense of how easy it is to really do a project like this and to create honestly a pretty functional little uh, camp axe or hatchet. But with that said, time to return to this project which is definitely going to take a very different direction. As the title suggests, I'm going for, I'm going to call it a throwing axe or throwing hatchet. It could actually be used for a number of different things, splitting wood, especially kindling, you know it's not going to have a very large blade. Uh, but I'm going to do my best to design it in a way where the overall shape and structure of the axe uh, will be good for throwing and uh, will give the thrower sort of the maximum opportunity to make sure that either a blade or a striking point comes into contact with the target. So at this point I'm cutting this off, not really following a blueprint here, so there might be a couple of modifications that I make as we go along. But after you do this type of work for you know a few months, you get a pretty good feel for design, what you think looks good, and ultimately it's a hobby. Do what makes you happy. So mainly here I'm going back and forth between uh, two different grinders. One of them I have a cutting wheel, uh, the other one I have a grinding disc. And I'll be cutting and shaping both the handle and the head of the tomahawk or, or hatchet, whatever you want to call it. And I'll be putting in some spikes. Uh, these are not meant to be penetrating type of spikes, but definitely the type that you would not want to get hit with. Now as you'll notice here in a minute, uh, there'll be a part where I do some welding. I want the handle and the head to fit together uh, in essentially a cross shape and uh, you'll see when I get to the end of the project uh, and actually demonstrate it uh, you'll see why that will be uh, desirable. Uh, in particular it's going to be desirable for somebody like me who doesn't have a lot of experience with you know the actual skill of throwing knives or throwing hatchets. Uh, this design is going to give the greatest possible advantage in actually doing damage to a target that they were throwing at. So again, to prep for the welding, uh, I'll be cutting a notch in the head and also cutting a notch in the handle. I'll do that with the grinder. If you don't have a grinder, you definitely could use files. You could even heat it back up and use you know, a hammer or some type of hardy tool. But realistically, a grinder is not a particularly expensive tool and I think it's a great investment for a knife maker, uh, a blacksmith, or any kind of metal worker. Once I have the notches cut the way I want them, uh, I fit the pieces together, did a little bit more finishing work on that so that they would fit really flush, and then I got out the welder. Welding this is pretty simple. I am definitely not a professional welder. Uh, I have a little bit of experience, but not a lot. Uh, but when you're doing a project like this, you know we're not talking about a structural weld here. Uh, it's a pretty forgiving process. And what I like to do is just, you know, if I'm concerned about the thing maybe breaking and coming apart, I'm basically just going to overdo it. Uh, this is a hobby project, so as you'll see, my hobbyist level skills will be adequate to do this job. Once I'm satisfied that things are looking pretty good, I'll clean this up with a wire brush. Uh, actually, I cleaned it up kind of along the way a couple of times because I don't want the thing to be totally ugly. Aesthetics was not my biggest priority with this build, uh, but there's no reason to have it looking just hideous. Uh, so I'm kind of cleaning it up as I go and making sure that those welds look, you know, halfway decent. Now all that's really left to do before I'm ready to put the wrap on this uh, is to harden the blade. I'm not going to worry about hardening the spikes because really they're going to be pretty durable even in a mild steel state. So I will be hardening the blade. This doesn't always work real well with rebar. Uh, I have tested this stuff before and I know that it will take a hardening at least to some extent. So I'll heat it up to around 1475 to 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. 
Uh, we'll plunge that into a bucket of water to quench it. Uh, and then as I'm kind of putting the finishing touches on the blade, uh, try to get a sense of how hard this steel really is. And if I need to temper it, uh, I'll probably take it in the house and do that in the oven. Uh, I'll do that off camera, but the tempering process is where you take a hardened steel and you heat it back up to, you know, 350, 400, 450, 500 degrees. Uh, however high you want to go for the particular qualities you want from the steel. And what that does is it just, it reintroduces a little bit of softness to the steel uh, and that'll give you a little bit of resilience so you're not going to chip the blade as easily. In fact, uh, depending on the type of steel you're using, a hardened knife can actually be very, very brittle uh, without tempering. So I'll probably do that part off camera uh, if it needs to be done. Uh, and then I'm just out of time for tonight. So this is the tool as is. Tomorrow I'm going to put a wrap on this thing and we will test it out. So definitely tune in for that show. Uh, if you're watching this in the future, I will have a link to that right here at the end. I think what we'll probably do uh, is just put a wrap on it and then split some wood. Uh, and then of course we have to throw this thing. So uh, I'm thinking about getting some, I don't know, maybe watermelon or cantaloupe or something and just pretty much going to war on the vegetables. So definitely tune in for that one. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of this. Subscribe to the channel if you would. And until next time, have a wonderful day. And we'll see you in the next video.